إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, two ayat we heard frequently in Ramadan that we remind ourselves with as we depart Ramadan. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed and sent down. It is the guidance for mankind. The clear proofs for that guidance is all throughout its words. And the criterion between right and wrong exists within it. Everything we need to be successful, to be happy, to be at peace is in this book, the Quran. وقال الله إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا and Allah says what means verily this Quran it guides to that which is most just and right and gives glad tidings to the believers to the ones who withhold to, who uphold Tawheed the oneness of Allah and believe in His Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم those who work deeds of righteousness that they will have a great reward meaning Jannah as their eternal abode, abode. We must remind ourselves that this Qur'an is not just the book of the month of Ramadan, but the book for every, every day, every hour, every minute, every second of our lives. Ibadullah, Ramadan came to us as a reminder to recharge our batteries as a life vest, because we were all drowning in this dunya as we commonly get. It was the month of Tawbah, the month of Maghfirah, the month of the revelation of the Qur'an, the doors of Jannah were open. The doors of Jahannam, the hellfire were closed. The devils were chained up. The masajid were more frequented than any other times of the year. People gave in sadaqah seeking the reward of Allah. The Quran was read. We emulated the sunnah of our Prophet wasallam. Yet we ask now that the month has finished. That Ramadan has passed and departed us and we bid it farewell. Who has undone their home, their shield, their shelter that they built during Ramadan? Who will lose the salvation that they possibly gained during Ramadan? قال الله ولا تكونوا كالتي نقدت غزلها من بعد قوة أنتاثا. Allah says what means and be not like her who undoes the thread after she has spun it and it has become strong. That I that method that comparison that you should all reflect upon with respect to your Ramadan who was foolish enough to spend a month building a fortress only to bring a bulldozer and take it down, who was foolish enough to build a home only then to light it on fire, who was foolish enough to knit a blanket so that you can have warmth and it can protect you, 
Then, once it's finally done, you pull the string and you unravel all the work you did. Who was foolish enough to plant trees till they grow fruits, and then you're ready to taste the fruit, only to then bring a plow and plow, uh, plow, and plow it all down. So soon after the days of Ramadan, after reading the Qur'an, after fasting, after standing in Qiyam, after giving charity, that the shayateen get released, and we go back to the evil and the sin we were upon. Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah, may Allah pre- preserve our Shaykh. He said, Ayyuhal Muslimun, inna min alamat al-qabool shahr al-Ramadan, an takuna hal al-Muslim ba'dahu ahsan min halahu qabl Ramadan. He said, O oh Muslims, it is, from the, it is from the signs of an accepted Ramadan, an accepted fast, an accepted good deeds, that the situation of the Muslim is better after Ramadan than it was before Ramadan. Because because good good goodness it leads to more goodness and it calls to goodness. And doing righteous deeds, it leads you to do more righteous deeds and it calls you to do righteous deeds. Ramadan Muslim وَيُرَبِّيهِ عَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ الطَّاعَةِ فَهُوَ بَعْضُ رَمَضَانِ يَسْتَمِرْ عَلَىٰ الطَّاعَةِ Because the month of Ramadan, <clears throat> the Muslim, he gets used to doing good deeds and he cultivates himself to the obedience of Allah. So after Ramadan, he is firm and steadfast upon this. إِنَّ مَجَالِ الْعَمَلَ الصَّالِحِ مَفْتُوحٌ أَنَاءَ اللَّيْلُ وَأَنَاءَ النَّهَارِ The way to do good deeds is open for you to do. All the night and all the days, every hour, every minute, it's always a time for you to good deeds. في كل السنة, throughout the entire year. فإن 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 أردت القيام فقيام الليل مشروع في كل السنة. And he said, if you want to do and you're pleased by doing قيام الليل, getting up for the night prayers, then this is مشروع. This is allowed for you and permissible and part of our deen that you do it throughout the whole year. تَقُومْ مَا يَسْرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ That you get up with what you can, or from what Allah makes easy for you to do. وَتَحَافِظْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَتَدَاوَمْ عَلَيْهِ And you should preserve this yourself and stick to following that. إِنْ إِنْ أَرَدْتَ الصِّيَامِ فَالصِّيَامِ مَشْرُوعٌ وَمُسْتَحَبْ فِي سَائِرِ السَّنَةِ If you can do the fasting, if you love to do the fasting, then this is مَشْرُوعٌ This is allowed for you to do throughout the entire year. إِنْ أَرَدْتَ تَلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ فَالْقُرْآنِ مُيَسْرٌ فِي كُلِّ وَقْتِ وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلْذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Allah SWT, and then Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, he continued, and if you seek to get closer to Allah by reciting the Qur'an, then reciting the Qur'an from what is easy for you should be done throughout every time and every day. And Allah says, and we indeed have made the Qur'an easy to understand and remember, then is there anyone who will remember other, or receive admonition other than that? <coughs> فَدَاوَمْ عَلَىٰ تَلَاوَةِ الْقُرْآنِ فَإِنَّهُ حَبْلَ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينِ بِيَدِكِ So stick firmly and tightly to the Qur'an and hold on to it. As Allah said, وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Cling to the Qur'an. Hold tight to it. Follow it. Read it. Implement it the best you can. جَمِيعًا All of you together and do not become divided. So hold on to that and recite from the book because it is the rope of Allah extended from the heavens to the earth in your hand. وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ عَتَادَ فِي شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ وَأَلَفِ الْمَسَاجِدِ فَإِنَّ الْمَسَاجِدِ مَفْتُوحَةٌ لِلَّهِ وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ فِي سَائِرِ السَّنَةِ And also, those, came, those, people, those from the people who came out to the masajid during Ramadan, to worship Allah in His home, to be a guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His masajid, then this is something you should know that it's open throughout the entire year for you to come. And He praised Allah for this. And this was from the statements of Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, Habibullah. So a month of struggle and sacrifice possibly just turns into a month where you starved yourself and just became thirsty. But if you continue the struggle after Ramadan, after Ramadan, then you come, then this is a sign of the acceptance of your fasting. And the opposite is true. If you go back to sin, then maybe you achieved nothing by your fasting. Because the month of fasting was prescribed so that we could achieve taqwa. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ كُتِبَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Because Allah said, O oh, you who believe, 
Fasting has been prescribed upon you like it was prescribed upon those before you so you may achieve taqwa, so you may achieve that God consciousness, you may fear Allah and keep your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet for some, just hours into the day of Eid, or the day after Eid, or two days after Eid, or five days after Eid, you see them going back, all their worship, all their ibadah, all their self-control, they forget Allah, they forget their Islam, they forget the Qur'an, they forget the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they forget that this masjid exists, that they could come and worship Allah in it, they forget their purpose in life, the purpose of our whole being wasn't for us to allow ourselves to fulfill our desires, but it was as Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I did not create jinn or mankind except to worship me. At the beginning of Ramadan, everyone wants to turn a page, to turn their evil into good, to come back to the light from the darkness they were in, to increase in worship, to leave off sin, to do good deeds, to affirm their tawheed, to make their prayers and add their extra prayers, to pay their zakat and give their extra sadaqat, to do the silat al-rahim, to fix their family ties and the likes of these matters. So is this too much outside of Ramadan? Does Allah ask us to do too much by asking us to live outside of Ramadan like we did in Ramadan? Is it going to kill us or end our life if we just leave off the sin and disobedience for the goodness and the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you love this dunya more than a jannah that is for eternity? A jannah where it would be said, if you enter it, may Allah make us from those who enter it. Udkhuluha bi salam, ذَلِكَ yawmul khulud. Enter into this jannah in peace and security. This is the day of eternal life. Again in Ramadan, we saw that true submission. We saw the sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With our charity, our bodies fatigued, coming to prayers even though we were tired, coming later in the night. Even though we sought to sleep in our beds for the sake of Allah and not for the dunya. The Lord of Ramadan, He is the Lord of this month of Shawwal. وَهُوَ رَبُّ شَوَّالٍ وَرَبُّ ذُو الْقِعْدَ وَرَبُّ ذُو الْحِجَّةِ وَرَبُّ مُحَرَّمٍ وَرَبُّ سَفَرٍ وَرَبُّ رَبِيعَ الْأَوَّلِ And so on and so on. The Lord of, of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the Lord of this month of Shawwal, and the Lord of the next month, Dhul Qa'da, and the Lord of Dhul Hijjah, and the Lord of Muharram, and all of the months, the same Lord. So the question is, هَلْ خَصَّصَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ التَّوْبَ فِي رَمَضَانِ هل خصص الله عز وجل الصيام في رمضان فقط؟ هل خصص الله الصدقة في رمضان فقط؟ هل خصص الله عز وجل أن 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 نعبده في رمضان فقط؟ Did Allah just specify to worship Him and read the Quran and fast and make tawbah and give in charity during Ramadan by itself? No, He did not. Allah said, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah said, and all of you together, O believers, Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may be successful. He did not say only in Ramadan. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرْ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُونَ Give in charity. None of you will achieve the reward of Jannah till you give from that which you love the most. Allah did not say لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرْ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُونَ فِي رَمَضَان He did not specify the time so it was meant for all times. So you give from that which you love the most at all times and Allah will reward you with Jannah. From the signs of the acceptance of our fasting is that taqwa was achieved and that we follow up the good of Ramadan with good after Ramadan in the next 11 months hoping to see another Ramadan to worship our Lord. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Allah says what means, verily those who say our Lord is Allah, alone without any partners, the only one we worship, and therefore they have istiqama, they stand firm and straight on tawheed, on the aqeedah of our righteous predecessors, as salaf as salih on abstaining from all kinds of evil and sin, and going towards all types of good and khair, on them shall be no fear, no fear nor shall they grieve. That istiqama is important. Anyone can say, I believe in Allah. Anyone can say it with their tongue. Anyone can say, I believe it in my heart. It is the istiqama, the actions, the firmness upon those actions that will grant us success. Allah says, Allah says, What means, and verily I am indeed forgiving to the one who repents, believes in my oneness, does righteous deeds, and then remains constant in doing them. He did not specify in Ramadan. It was for every day, for every time, for every hour. Standing out firm, again, was for all the days of our life. Jum'a ila Jum'a, Friday to Friday. Ramadan ila Ramadan, Ramadan to every Ramadan. Prayer to every prayer. So why then do we stop answering this call when Ramadan ends? 
So ask yourselves, do you think Ramadan, this last Ramadan, was enough to have saved me and I can do what I want for the rest of my life? Is one, does one Ramadan, will it make this ummah successful or better or, or more victorious? Are you fine being a Ramadan Muslim or a Muslim who just shows up on Jum'ah? Ask yourself these. Are you okay with the Qur'an only being read and lived and acknowledged? The final message, Kalam Allah, the words of Allah, Hadl Allah, the rope of Allah, Mandud min as-sama'i ila al-ard that is outstretched from the heavens to the earth. Are you fine with that book just being a part of your life for that one month out of the year? You would be foolish to think so. From the beauties of Islam that makes people come into Islam in droves, that Islam gives them every way, every day way of life. It gives you guidance for every day of your life, every hour of your life, every minute of your life. Look at all the adriya for every situation that happens, even with the weather and the changes of the weather. This is from the ni'am, from the blessings of Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, taqullah. Wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad, wa taqullah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Allah says what means, O you who believe, fear Allah. Keep your duty to Allah and let every person look to what he has sent forth for tomorrow and fear Allah. Verily, Allah is all aware of what you do. Allah must, He must be worshipped the way He deserves to. He, the way, he must be remembered the way He deserves to be remembered. He must be acknowledged the way He deserves to. And He must be the most important aspect, the pinnacle of our life at all times. The Sahaba, they lived out Ramadan for six months. And the following five, they were planning, hoping to meet the next Ramadan. So they have that Ramadan effect all year. What are we doing with respect to this? So we see two groups after Ramadan. Pick the one you want to be from. One, the group of Ramadan. Who in Ramadan, they fasted, they prayed, they came to the masajid, they gave in charity. But the minute Ramadan leaves, they leave. You don't see them in the masjid anymore. You don't hear about them. They go back to following their desires, their hawa, their sin, and everything, and they almost exist like they did, they almost act like Allah doesn't exist anymore. And then there's the other group, the ones who in Ramadan, they strove hard, they prayed, they fasted, they gave in charity, and yet they knew Ramadan was coming to an end, and a sadness filled their heart. Like the one they loved the most was leaving them, and was gonna leave being with them. And this was their protection, this was their protection, this was their sense of security and peace and happiness. So they left, they were afraid, they were saddened, they tasted halawat al-iman, loving Allah and His Messenger وسلم, more than anyone and anything else. Yet, Ramadan comes to an end, and their fear is not anything other than that they're going to recoil and go back to sin, or go back to following their desires, or go back to some evil ways that they may have been upon. Which group do you want to fall under? You can preserve Ramadan by being steadfast and correcting your heart, so that you will be safe on the day of resurrection. That day where the, your children and your wealth, they will not avail you. They will not be able to sell, save you, except for the one who comes to Allah with a pure, a pure clean heart, clean from nifaq, clean from shirk, clean from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and hypocrisy and polytheism. And we have in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ, towards the end of it, he has said, Where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he said, indeed, in the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is sound and good and wholesome, the rest of the body will be sound and good and wholesome. But if it is corrupt, if it, if it is diseased, then the rest of the body will be diseased. And that piece of flesh is the heart. An Aisha radiallahu anha qalat qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam iklafu min al-amal ma tutiqoon fa inna allaha la yamallu hatta tamallu wa inna ahabba al-amal ila allahi adwamuhu wa inqal. This hadith which we have in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, Shaykh al-Adani, he graded it as Sahih. Rahimahullah, the Prophet sallallahu he said, choose the actions you're capable of doing. For Allah does not grow weary until you do. The acts most pleasing to Allah are those which are done continuously, even if they are little. Even if they're little. Just that you have that istiqamah, you have that tathbeet, you have that, uh, that niyyah, you keep that action going. This is more beloved to Allah than you doing something grand one time and not returning to it. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Tawheed is the key to the acceptance of our deeds. And the key to entering Jannah is the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needed for us to go to Jannah. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, this is not only through Ramadan, this is throughout all times. 
من عمل صالحا من ذكر او انثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم اجرهم باحسن ما كانوا يعملون. Allah says what means whoever works righteousness any time not just in Ramadan whoever works deeds of righteousness male or female any portion of their life any time of their life any day of their life while he or she is a true believer in Tawheed verily to him or her we will give a good life in this world contentment halal wealth all of those things and we will pay them certainly reward in the poor, in their proportion in the best of what they used to do meaning in the hereafter with Jannah may Allah make us from them أقول قال هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم إذ الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ما dear brothers and sisters in Islam at one point in every one of our lives we probably had someone acknowledge us only when there was an occasion. And this is why, alhamdulillah, Islam distanced us from just a Valentine's Day and a Mother's Day and a Father's Day and the likes of these days. Because when you love someone, it should show all the time. Yet all of us have probably been at the time where someone only acknowledged us, where we felt loved by someone only because it was the day of your birth or because of a special occasion. And we all know that somewhere in our mind it crosses it, well, this feels crummy. This person only acknowledges me because it's this day or so. So we do this to each other as human being, beings, and we realize that it hurts. And although Allah doesn't need us, and although we really, really need Allah without a doubt, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do the same thing to Allah, and it's nothing but a slap in the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we would only worship Him or do good for Him during the month of Ramadan and ignore Him the rest of the year. Who al alim He knows all things. Who was Samir? He sees all, who he hears all things. Who was Basir? He sees all things. He said, He said, I am closer to my servants than their jugular vein, the vein that runs up and down your throat. Not physically, that Allah has full knowledge of every even heartbeat, every cell in your body that has to do what it has to do. Allah knows it completely and fully. He knows our innermost thoughts and our minds. So Allah cannot be fooled, He knows the truth, and we're only deceiving ourselves. So come on, how can we only show up during Ramadan? Ask yourself this, how can I only show up during Ramadan? I proved to Allah I was capable. If I could do it in that month, why can I do it at other months? Who has given in charity since Ramadan has ended? Who has fasted one day since Ramadan has ended? Who has picked up the Mus'haf and read one ayah since Ramadan has ended? Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, Hafidahullah, he said, فَإِنَّ حَقَّ اللَّهِ لَا يَنْتَهِي إِلَّا بِالْمَوْتِ وَاعْبُدُ, رب وعبد رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينِ الله, الله هو رب رمضان ورب شوال وهو رب جميع شهور السنة فاتق الله في كل الشهور حافظوا على دينكم حافظوا على دينكم حافظوا على دينكم في كل حياتكم فإنه رأس مالكم عن عند الله سبحانه وتعالى وهو نجاتكم من النار فحافظوا على دينكم وتمسكوا به في كل الشهور وفي كل الأوقات إن شهر رمضان يتبع بالشكر ويتبع بالاستغفار ويتبع بالفرح بفضل الله تعالى الذي مكننا من صيامه وقيامه فنحن نفرح بهذه النعمة لا نفرح بانتذاء الشهر وإنما نفرح بأننا أكملناه في عبادة الله وفي هذا, وفي هذا نفرح قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرح هو خير مما يجمعون واحذروا من كثرة اللهو واللهو واللعب من كثرة الغفلة وإن والإعراب عن طاعة الله لأن الشيطان حريص أن يقتل أعمالكم وأن ويمهو كل ما فعلتموه من الخير. شيخ صالح الفوزان he gave a beautiful advice. He said, حفيده الله may Allah preserve him even in the, if the month of Ramadan comes to an end. The rights that Allah has over us does not come to an end until death. He says, and worship your Lord until certainty comes to you. حتى يأتيك اليقين. This is death. Allah is the Lord of the month of Ramadan, the Lord of Shawwal, 
the Lord, the Lord of all the months of the year. So fear Allah all the months. He said three times, guard your deen, guard your deen, guard your deen, guard your faith and your religion throughout your life because it is your main asset with Allah and it is your salvation from the hellfire. So guard your deen and hold on to it uh, all months and at all times. Verily the month of Ramadan is to be followed by you giving thanks, asking for forgiveness, having, being happy with the favors Allah has enabled you to fast and pray in it. So we rejoice due to this blessing, not because the month has ended and passed and it's behind us, but you rejoice because of the blessings of Allah. Whether we rejoice as we have followed through Ramadan with the worship of Allah, that is why we rejoice. Allah says, say in the bounty of Allah and in His mercy, in that let them rejoice, it is better than what they accumulate. So beware of indulging in a lot of entertainment and a lot of play and beware from heedlessness and giving up the obedience of Allah. Because shaitan, he's eager for you to waste your deeds, for you to light your deeds on fire so they become scattered like dust, like you have nothing to give and nothing to show for. He wants you to erase all that you have done of good actions. So when Ramadan ends, shaitan, he's luring you and enticing you so that you become free and unrestrained as if you have been released from prison. So they become free to indulge in entertainment and play, heedless and wastedness of prayers and other actions. Do not waste away those good deeds that you worked so hard to accumulate. And being like that one we mentioned, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَدَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثَةٍ Do not be like her who after she strung, strung her, her, her yarn and made something strong, she goes and she undoes it all. Do not be like this. So fear Allah, O slaves of Allah. Guard what you have worked for from the good deeds and repent for the shortcomings and mistakes because Allah accepts the repentance of those who repent. Shaykh Salih al Fawzan again, Hafidahullah, he said, O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that you have a Lord, how have you forgotten Him after Ramadan? O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that Allah obligated for you five daily prayers in the masajid, the obligation for us, for the men of this ummah, is to pray the five salawat, salawat al khams, in the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi buyutillah, in the houses of Allah. O oh, you who know that, how do you not know that or pretend to not know that after Ramadan? O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that Allah has forbidden you from sin, how have you forgotten that after Ramadan? O oh, you who during Ramadan knew that in front of you is paradise and Jahannam, paradise and the hellfire, reward and punishment, yet you've forgotten that after Ramadan. O oh, you who used to fill the masajid during Ramadan, and you used to read the book of Allah during Ramadan. How have you abandoned them and abandoned the Quran after Ramadan? And we seek refuge, Allah, from this blindness after having light and sight from the guidance after guidance. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this was the reason our Prophet Bekah, Allahumma ummati ummati, why he cried saying, Oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah, because he knew our desires were strong. He knew we would, we would chase wealth and chase our desires, and chase our lusts and our whims. And this is what we have seen, nonetheless, become the result of every one of our lives in all reality. Now look, in, in Ramadan, the prayers, the rows, three, four, five, six, seven rows, and now we can't make one row after Ramadan. Is Allah blind? He's not blind, He sees everything. He sees it, yet now the people don't come. In Ramadan, and Tarweeh, and Qiyam, was it wajib? Was it a fard that you come and pray tarweeh, that you pray 11 rak'ahs, that you stand, standing in prayer and listening to what was recited of the Quran? No, it was not. But what is fard is that you come and you pray in the masjid for your five daily prayers. What did Allah's Messenger وسلم, say? This one, Yuzid, Lekya, Yani, Sab'an, Sab'an, Wa'ashirin, Adaraja. You'll get the reward of 27 times than if you were to pray alone. Qala Rasulullah وسلم, Man Salah, Salat al Isha, fi Jama'ah. فَكَأَنَّمَا قَامَ نِسْفَ اللَّيْلِ وَمَنْ صَلَّى السُّبْحِ فَجَمَاءَ فَكَأَنَّمَا صَلَّى اللَّيْلَ قُلَّهِ The Prophet ﷺ said, the one who stands up, praying Salat al-Isha in the masjid, in jama'ah, in congregation, then it will be written for him like he prayed half the night in prayer. And then if he comes at Tajr, and he prays Tajr in the masjid in jama'ah, it will be written for him like he prayed the whole night in prayer. Where's the common sense? One thing was not obligatory upon us, now this is... The masajid should be maintained, this masjid for every, at least Salat al-Isha should have five, six rows. If we really feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, question yourself. How can you do it diligently for one month? And you know the same Lord of Ramadan is the Lord of every month. And then you abandon the masajid as if you don't know where it is anymore. You don't know its address. It's like we're taking Allah and His deen and mocking it. Calling Allah a fool. Calling Allah blind. Calling Allah deaf. Belittling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal ayat billah. If we do this, we will be the losers without a doubt. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, remember the ayah. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Remember the ayah that Allah said in the Qur'an what means, oh, uh, and, and Muhammad sallallahu will say, Oh my Lord, my people have deserted this Qur'an, abandoned this Qur'an. They've left it off, they've ignored it, they've put it behind them. So we must question ourselves daily to live when we can live outside of Ramadan, like we lived in Ramadan, then we will be deserving of the ayah, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. Then we can fall under the banner that you are the best nation raised up for mankind. Ta'maruna bil ma'roof. You enjoin what is good. Wa tanhawna al munkar and you forbid what is evil. Wa tu'minuna billah. Then you will be true believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us take this advice. Eid was just Monday, it's Friday, yet we already see the dwindling of the numbers from the masajid, even though there was 200 plus, 300 plus here during Ramadan. Do not be fooled by shaitan. Do not be sucked into his trap. Do not make yourself be of the ones who are the losers, who comes to Allah on the day of resurrection, worshiping Him one month out of the year. Make sure your salawat are firm, your prayers are firm. For the men of this ummah, for the young boys of this ummah, the ones who have hit puberty in their life, their masajid, their prayers should be done in the masajid so that the community can take care of one another. So Allah can be worshipped in, in His home the way He deserves to be worshipped, the way He ordered us to be worshipped so we can safeguard the Qur'an and the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let us be firm upon this. Wake yourselves up. Shake yourselves. Get your wife involved. Get your alarm clock involved. Get whatever it takes involved. But come to the masajid. Read the book of Allah. Fast the six days of Shawwal. It will be like you fasted. If you fix fast the six days of Shawwal after you fasted Ramadan, it will be written for you like you fasted the whole year, even though it would be 36 days. But Allah will reward you like you fasted the 350 plus days that there, that there are in the year. This is the reward for the one who fasts the six days of Shawwal. If you have fast to make up from Ramadan, you have to make those up first. Wallahu a'lam. This is what appears to be more correct. From the statements of the ulama. Allah makhl al Muslimin wal Muslimat, wal Mu'minin wal Mu'minat, wal Ahya min hum al Amwat. Inna ka anta Sami' al Qalib al Mujib al Da'wat. Ya Muqallib al Qulub, Tabit Qulub al Alabin. Allah makhl al Quran al Rabi' al Qulubina, wa Nur al Sudurina, wa Jala' al Ahzanina, wa Dhahab al Hamumina. Ya Arham al Rahimin. Subhan Rabbi ka Rabbi al Azizi al Nasiifun. Wa Salam al Al Mursalin. Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbi al Alamin. Wa Sallallahu alaihi wa Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.